good evening to all participants and attendees from india and good morning to those who have joined from canada us and other countries welcome to talks at intersection 2020 this series of talks comprises of talks by six leading architects across the globe where they share their practices and projects earlier we had talks by architect asaf ben nun from israel and last week we were privileged to have architect manish gulati from new delhi today with us we have architect adrian fifer from canada he has his own architectural firm office of adrian fifer which experiments with a range of design methods that bring new intensities to the current practice of architecture adrian also teaches at the university of toronto in architecture landscape and design we are privileged to have adrian with us today for all the attendees i would request if you have any question and answer you can put it up in the q and a box below it will be taken up after adrian's presentation during the q and a session the session will be moderated by architect bhanu pratap sharma thank you adrian for joining us and i hand over to you now thank you uh thank you mohi let me just uh share my screen okay Uh, thank you very much for this invitation, Mohit and Bano. It's uh, it's a real privilege to 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 talk to your uh, you know to your audience and to be able to 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 reach out all the way to to India and especially to Ahmedabad, which is such a a, a city that I admire uh, so much, um, given the 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 examples of architecture that that live there. I am uh, I am originally from uh, Romania. and i moved to to canada in 2005 um to uh, to do a master of urban design uh, at the university of toronto so um it's been more than 15 years that i have been living in uh, toronto and i i like to say that uh, my work is very much shaped by the interaction that i have with uh, with uh, toronto and for uh, for a foreigner uh, Toronto might be your usual American city uh for people that are visiting from uh, from United States they say that it has an european feel uh in my opinion Toronto it's a very kind city it's extremely welcoming and uh, extremely enjoyable um but the way that i decided to to kind of or i try to understand Toronto it's uh, as a city that actually uh it's a city without i I think uh, this understanding of, of Toronto for me has been very very important uh because uh, it has meant that I I understand Toronto actually as a as a different type of city a city that in my opinion it's uh, uh it's incredibly open uh, and ready to accept uh, anything and I I believe that that acceptance is given by its generic character my understanding of toronto it's uh, also shaped by uh, by a close reading of the of the work of uh, ludwig hilberzheimer um german theoretician um and what i what i what i learned from hilberzheimer it's how to to read the city um as a you know as a as a form that it's very much anchored into the 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 reality of uh, of of our time so is this understanding of of the present time that kind of also informs the way that i am reading uh, the city and of course when one looks at uh, at the work of uh, hilberzheimer uh, and when he's uh, when one tries to understand uh, especially his uh, his proposals are quite uh, wonderful in my opinion because they are unpretentious 
and they are just anchored into a into an effort of how to produce forms uh, that respond and try to organize the the, the uh, organize the you know the life of uh, of the city. Uh, this is the proposal of Hilbersheim for, for a high-rise city, uh, which is quite uh, interesting as an assemblage of typologies uh, where you have the slab, the hotels on top of, uh, of block buildings that are actually the factories. Um, of course, there is a short uh, distance from Hilbersheimer to the work of Jacques Tati, uh, and more specifically to his movie Playtime. Um, and I like to make this uh, connection between Hilbersheimer and Tati because for me Tati opens up a different, uh, a different perspective into one we'll call the generic city. And that perspective, which I have also seen in Toronto, is that uh, uh, the quietness and the sobriety of form uh, actually invites for multiple types of, uh, of living. Um, so uh, in my case, uh, this, this this reading of Jacques Tati and Hilbert Zama becomes very, very important, uh, especially living in Toronto. And here you see a view from my uh, kitchen window. Uh, this is Toronto, and uh, I, I have somehow to engage in a conversation with uh, the city. And especially when uh, in front of my window a new building is coming up, and this is my current view from the, from the kitchen window. Um, so the way that I have started to engage uh, in a dialogue with Toronto has been through a series of projects developed with, uh, with uh, my students at the University of Toronto under the, the topic New Generics. Um, it's not so much uh, trying to reinvent the generic, it's just again uh, pushing forward with uh, certain concepts associated to, with the generic. Um, also, the work of the, the, the my work uh, around the idea of generic, it's also shaped by, by other efforts. Uh, another project that we have done uh, in the office this time, it's a short movie called The Hero of Generic Architecture. It's a movie made out of uh, five parts uh, that range from atmosphere to repetition, form, and authorship. And this, uh, these five parts are actually um, a way, I see that uh, someone has raised the hand. I don't know if there is a problem or if you cannot see my, uh, my screen. Is there a, is there a problem with the, with the, with the, with the viewing? No, 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 no. Please continue. No. There's no issue. All right. All right, so I'll just get going uh, and um, uh, and I'll, what I like to do is I like to play just two parts of this movie as a, as a way to kind of of this of this continuation of my introduction and I'll be playing the the first part of the movie the atmosphere which actually it's a, it's another reading of Hilbersheimer High Rise City and I'll be playing the the last part the one on uh, authorship. is the hero of generic architecture. I have seen Hilbersheimer Hochhausstadt drawing in person, and it is very soft. This is to say that Hilbersheimer was interested in phenomenology. Phenomenology is the philosophical discovery that things are exactly as they appear to be. To put it more ordinarily, it is about how it feels. Don't be afraid. Generic is beautiful.
first part uh, of the movie, which is actually, as I said, the play on Hilberzheimer, uh, Hochhausstadt uh, city. Um, and it's, it's just a question on uh, how can one read the, the generic as beyond the usual uh, labels that one will apply as boring or ordinary or, uh, or, or a function of repetition and actually looking into how it can produce atmospheres. Um, of course, the question of genetic is also one of authorship. In, uh, in our uh, final part of the movie, we have work on this theme, and I'll just, uh, I'll just play this part uh, now. I will teach you the secret of making generic architecture. There is a box. The box is a tool. Enter the box. Orbit. Orbit again. This shape allows for the plant to be equal to like modern architecture. You can leave it as it is. Alternatively, you can give yourself a roof. Always pitched. At the door. At windows. Do it in the simplest way. Click render. Now look outside. This is a movie done with uh, with uh, uh, three wonderful collaborators, with Angela Cho, Matthew Khalil, and Avi Odenheimer, um, who are recent graduates of our uh, Master of Architecture program at uh, U of T. Um, and as I mentioned, in the office, we try to engage in different conversations with the, with the city. Uh, and of course, they range from writing text to doing movies, but mainly we, we work on, on design competitions. Uh, of course, this, is, uh, this has become very challenging given the current times. Uh, but what you see here, it's, uh, it's obviously a very large uh, model of a design uh, competition that we have done uh, uh, last year. It is a proposal for a one kilometer long installation in, uh, in Montreal, where we have tried to, to deal with a couple of uh, problems uh, in, in the city. Uh, one of them being rethinking the, the idea of the street and rethinking it in a way that actually address some of the, um, some of the of our, of our, of our contemporary uh, city. Uh, this is, in the end, a proposal for a very simple uh, canopy above the street. Um, just to give you a little bit more context, uh, this competition was launched uh, um, in Montreal uh, because uh, as, a, as a way to replace the Claude Cormier installation uh, in the gay village in, uh, in, uh, in Montreal. Um, and the task of the competition was, has been quite difficult because Claude Cormier has done such an uh, impeccable uh, job at developing a system to, to, to put in place a, a canopy that is not so much a canopy, but at the same time uh, managed to create a, an absolutely beautiful atmosphere on the street. Um, and I always thought that it's absolutely impossible to, to beat, uh, you know, or to make something better than what it's here, um, right? And you can see here the, the project of Claude Cormain it's, uh, in its totality, it's 18 shades of, uh, uh, of gay and how they kind of, they mark, uh, they mark this space in, um, in the city. Uh, what is important here to mention is that the client uh, was also very keen in seeing a new scheme for the street that actually will work also in the winter. 
so that was uh, that was uh, that was uh, you know uh, uh, another challenge of the project, which I think kind of helped us to go maybe beyond and believe that uh, uh, the project of Pot Cormier uh, is possible. Um, the project was along uh, Rue Saint Catherine uh, in uh, in east of Montreal, um, which is a quite uh, quite uh, interesting area because it's uh, uh, it's rough, but I, I think it has the kind of roughness that one will uh, enjoy. And our questions has always been: How does one create an event in the city? Um, how does one create uh, a, a space of a gathering? Uh, and it seems that it's always by, by actually some sort of an action that uh, attracts, attracts attention uh, and creates some sort of a drama. Um, our fascination with, uh, with creating a canopy, something that it's up in the air, was also a fascination of how does one work with, uh, with uh, air. Uh, and of course, this points immediately to the work of Gift Klein and his ideas, architectural ideas of creating uh, uh, roofs or shelters out of um, uh, air. Uh, and of course, in our, uh, in our, in our, in our young and, uh, uh, let's just call it naive way of uh, proposing things, we, we, we always thought that it's possible to float uh, a couple of, uh, of, of, of shapes or balloons in the city that kind of managed to generate a, a, space, uh, uh, a space for uh, enjoyment. Uh, so here it is uh, us trying to, to test for the first time what uh, this idea might be like. Um, and of course, as we are developing the, the scheme, uh, we, we started looking into uh, things such as how does one feed air into this, uh, into this project and uh, the work of Michael Rakovitz and a way of creating some sort of architecture uh, that uh, tries to hack into existing infrastructure has been on the table. Uh, I should mention here that uh, we have worked with uh, Transolar consultants from New York on this project, we have been, which have been quite wonderful in actually helping us to imagine things or to resolve technical things that otherwise would have been um, impossible. Uh, but once again, the project was about creating a sense of uh, shelter and a sense of covering, uh, which immediately uh, has, has put the project in the large tradition of, uh, uh, of gallery spaces or of streets uh, being covered, but also has put the project into a zone which is that of uh, more radical projects, that of uh, inhabiting the, the air, such as the work of uh, Yona, Yona Friedman. Um, of course, it's, uh, it's also worth uh, introducing here another example, such as uh, the Fremont uh, Street experience in, uh, in Las Vegas, which is, uh, you know, it's uh, your typical Las Vegas uh, space, um, where actually, you know, the, the, the user, it's, uh, it seems to me permanently enveloped into into this new experience, and of course, with our project, we have tried to uh, to instill a new atmosphere into the into the state of Saint Catherine. But what was also important for us is to put forward some sort of uh, sort of a project that, in a way, it's invisible, but also open, and it's open to the city, to the city and allows the city as it is to to be uh, to be itself. Um, this comes out of, uh, of, uh, of another reference, the work of House Rooker uh, and their work with inflatable structures. But what was the fascination with House Rooker? It's an uh, it's a aphorism that we found so delightful, that of amnesty for the present. Um, which is on a, in, a, in a way a project of understanding the present and trying to work with, uh, with the present. Uh, and for us, this has become very important uh, and it's kind of present in all of, the, all of, the, all of our other projects because uh, um, uh, uh, at least for us, it means that we have to drop uh, the hysteria of uh, trying to chase some sort of a better future. And actually uh, it means that we can uh, we can, we can ground our project into what is uh, here, what is the present. Uh, St. Catherine Street, uh, as I mentioned, has a, has a type of roughness that to us was, uh, was very, very appealing. 
Um, and I'm reading this, uh, this, this character of St. Catherine Street also in the context that further west uh, along St. Catherine Street, there is a major landscape project for uh, reshaping the, the, the street, to which to us it seems to be like, uh, 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 you know, a project on absolute, uh, absolutely unbearable genericness, where this space uh, seems to be a space that also it's in Toronto, but also in uh, uh, Rotterdam uh, or also in Amsterdam uh, and, and so on. So we really try to, to look at the qualities of uh, real St. Catherine and, uh, and, and, uh, and work with this. So our project is really, it's also really a project on, uh, on maintaining the current science and the current uh, shapes that are on the, on, on the street. Um, of course, the work of Laurent Barthes and that of the Empire of the Science, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's so crucial uh, in this approach to the, to, the, to, the, to the reading of the city because uh, um, Roland Barthes understands the city as a collection of signs that actually include also things that are totally uncomfortable or unpo unpolished. So the range of things that one should include in the city goes beyond the regular uh, polishness. Um, and this is one of my uh, favorite view of the of, of, of the project, kind of a quiet moment in the corner of the city, uh, where this new presence in the city seems to be uh, invisible and at the same time uh, uh, gentle in its way that deals with the current uh, with the current situation. Um, um, and as I mentioned, uh, the, the, the project simply sits in the, in the site uh, on a couple of, uh, 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 on a series of columns in a way allows uh, and tries to promote an understanding of the city that allows for also for a certain uh, misbehavior, for a certain uh, inhabitation of the, of, the, of the street that is not uh, uh, driven by uh, anything uh, other than what it's actually in a city. Um, and of course, as we developed the project, another theme that became uh, uh, so important was the theme of the future street. So what is the future street and how our work is positioned vis-a-vis -vis this, this theme? Uh, and in general, looking at the work of uh, Eugene Canard, uh, on the future street, uh, on the future street, uh, the street has been a, uh, a, a layer of different technologies. Um, and when one looks at the current proposal for what the street could be, uh, in in my opinion, there is a slight uh, uh, delusion here with uh, thinking that everything will be green and everything will be just pure uh, happiness. Uh, in the end, uh, as, uh, as one walks through the city, these are the things that uh, are, are being encountered. Um, this idea of landscape uh, was interesting for, um, uh, for us. As I mentioned, uh, also the project was supposed to be something that will live uh, in, the, in the winter and the winters in, uh, in Montreal and in Quebec are way worse than the winters we have here in Toronto. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we, there is no joy at all. So our project, it's also a, a project on uh, how, to, how to perform. And it's a, it's a performance piece that actually tries to interact with the environment and with the current climate and then move forward to create, uh, to create other climates. Uh, it's a project that it's, uh, of course, modular. It's made out of... Uh, 100 feet uh, uh, long uh, pieces. This is, a, um, uh, this is about uh, 30 feet in, uh, in diameter. Um, and what we have uh, developed and what we have worked on with, with TransSolar, it's an idea of actually how to use and how to harness the, the solar heat in order to help, this, uh, this, uh, to, to help with the buoyancy of the, of the object. Uh, and what was being, uh, has been proposed is uh, it's a black rod that sits at the top, uh, uh, at the top of the, the cylinders. And in the end, it's just a very simple mechanism because 
by heating the air inside, it will help to create uh, buoyancy. And while the, the project will, uh, will sit at five meters above the street in the uh, winter, uh, in the summer will move up at uh, 7.5 meters. Uh, which meant that uh, the condition on the on the street uh, has uh, could be changed, and actually in the winter, uh, the warmer of the of the of the of the cylinder could change the the, the climate and the inhabitation underneath. And during the summer, uh, again, could uh, could extend the period of um, the period of uh, uh, of comfortable uh, comfortable inhabitation. Um, the project in the winter shelters the, the street from, uh, from snow uh, and was quite wonderful during a rainy time uh, to see uh, how it creates a almost beautiful and poetic uh, effect uh, where the drops of water uh, gather at the, at the bottom of the, of, the, of the form and fall in the middle of the, of the street. Um, another uh, interesting uh, aspect of the project that we have discussed with Transolar was the idea of creating clouds inside the, uh, inside the cylinder, clouds that actually will, uh, um, will, uh, will, will help with creating shade uh, during the, the summer. And again, uh, for us, uh, this effort of bringing clouds inside the, inside the void help us to, to understand maybe a, 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 a surreal relationship that we have right now with, uh, with the idea of climate and with the idea of what is inside and what is uh, outside. Um, to conclude with this, uh, this project, I think it's, uh, it's important to mention that we went into this competition uh, with the idea of using DTFE as a, um, uh, as a material, uh, 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 a material that I think will, uh, in a way, addresses many, many, many things. Uh, it's very durable, it's 100% recyclable, it's very light. Uh, uh, but also the, the question of working with TFU was a question of aesthetics. Uh, to us, most of the um, ETFE building looks like look like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger flexing his muscles, and we ask uh, you know we, we try to we did a little experiment and try to understand really what uh, what the ETFE wants to to be and uh, its shape and the way that it wants to be is really as a. Um, in a, in, a, in a round uh, shape. Mm. So, so the project really tries to to, to be uh, almost a, a gentle a gentle fly above the of the city, but at the same time also a project that uh, introduces the the idea of. Uh, um, uh, a surrealist idea of maybe of a void uh, of a shape that somehow is familiar but at the same time not very familiar uh, and and again the project has a quality of a, of an infrastructural piece but it's an infrastructural piece that we hope uh, will, uh, will will bring the the people together and uh, this is an image from uh, from uh, our time assembling the um, the project and trying to to understand uh, what it means and what it is uh, and we really hope uh, that uh, the project will will kind of allow for for a, for 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 the same type of gathering that the Cormier has a but somehow a gathering that can be extended throughout the year it's very obvious here that uh, our concerns, it's also the, a concern with the legibility of form. Uh, it's a concern with the, the large form in the, in the city. Um, a second project that I'd like to share with you is the, it's a project in Prague, in the Czech Republic, for a, um, for a conference center. Uh, the program, will, the program uh, for this building uh, uh, that seems to be quite uh, expressive from uh, outside and uh, uh, quite bold. It's, uh, it's super boring what the program asks us to, to imagine. It's a space which is uh, um, 
500 feet by uh, to, uh, by uh, by 150 50 feet wide, a, a large space where the city of uh, the city of Prague can uh, can have different type of uh, different type of events. Uh, this is uh, a space that we have decided somehow to float it in the in the city uh, and just push it up from the from the ground and this is for various reasons uh, in a way yes it's uh, it seems to be in the same family as the previous uh, project has this idea of floating or creating a void in the city but also there is this idea of clearing the ground and allowing the ground to exist uh, almost without uh, without interrupting the the, the current flow um, the project uh, it's again a stacking of uh, of two uh, generic plants um, the level minus one it's an existing parking uh, space uh, on the site uh, level zero it's a field of columns uh, a free plan and the level plus one it's actually uh, an empty space uh, being made possible by uh, by large uh, spans uh, you can see on the left side the, the the ground floor plan and on the right side the the, the space for the um, the space for the exhibition um, and again uh, this these two decision actually allow for a uh, uh, for multiple ways to use the space uh, throughout uh, throughout uh, time uh, for example you can see on the on the right side how the big hall can be divided into uh, three uh, six or uh, 12 uh, 12 uh, rooms uh, and and being used for different uh, for different types of uh, events but once again i want to bring the discussion to the outside uh, uh, because uh, we have tried to to somehow to negotiate how this project sits in the city prague being uh, a city with a rich uh, uh, with a rich architectural history and with a, with a rich history in uh, in general so our project tries to to uh, in a way to to tone down this brutal presence of a, of a large room in the city and creates a series of uh, spaces that allow for uh, interaction and movement uh, that allude to a, to a proper uh, open uh, space into a proper uh, public space um, and in these vignettes uh, that show a, a approach through the through the through the building, um, again, while the while the building sits in the in the you know in the middle of the context, the effort is how to understand the the building as one legible uh, form. Um, as an element that can be understood and isolated uh, 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 isolated from uh, its context. Um, of course, I, uh, there is a certain level of expressionism that the exterior uh, has, uh, uh, but I think again, it's it's based on 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 trying to enter into a dialogue with uh, with uh, with the city of uh, Prague. Um, this is another elevation of a project uh, of a competition project we have done in uh, South Korea. Uh, so as you can see. Uh, we can move very fast from creating objects that uh, have uh, strong expressions to other objects that are as large or larger than the project I have shown previously and have zero architectural expression. Uh, and I think everything comes again out of how does one understands the city. Um, the elevation that I just showed you, it's an elevation of a museum um south korea has decided in early 2000 to move its uh, administration capital administration to sejong from seoul um, and you can see in these uh, four uh, images the evolution of uh, of sejong uh, via google uh, google maps um, you know, it's quite uh, interesting and a little bit dystopic because the way that the city is organized it's as a series of districts so you'll have the entertainment district, you'll have the uh, office district, and then of course you have the cultural uh, district, which is marked here in red, and which was the the site of our uh, of our competition. Um, the competition asked for uh, for actually for a complex of ten different uh, museums. Um, 
uh, and some of the museums were labeled, some other museums were uh, not labeled. It was quite interesting to see that among the National Digital Heritage Museum, there is also a medium-sized museum, there's also a small-sized museum. Uh, quite wonderful to, 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 to try to practice uh, architecture with, uh, you know, with uh, such a specific uh, program. Uh, but what we thought was, uh, was really interesting and what was the opportunity here is to, to think about this 10 museum as one single building. Uh, what will happen if uh, we'll take the contents of all of the museums and we'll group them into one building? into a building that it's actually as open as possible, into a building that would allow for um, objects from different, uh, from different collections to interact with, uh, with each other. Um, it might look like a, a scene from, uh, from Jumanji, uh, but also a scene that uh, kind of could be quite rich as a, as a way of, uh, of, understanding, of understanding, again, the world in, uh, in, uh, in general. For us, what was really interesting when we, when we worked on the project was the opportunity to also behave as curators and to, free, to think through different strategies of organizing, uh, or, or organizing the content. So one could think that um, in the most uh, uh, classical manner, you can organize the context into different blobs uh, based on the institutions. Um, individual museum organized into separate zones that gives a centralized zone for each program with all interaction only on the edges. Um, but we thought it could be also interesting to, to propose here an idea of organizing the, uh, the, the content of the 10 museums based on uh, morphology. Um, there could have been also an idea of organizing uh, the, the museum into strips as a way of uh, into scales of strips. So actually you can see the small objects to one side of the building and as you move through the building, you get into the larger objects or that you can organize them by, uh, by color. So these abs ab absolutely simple strategies uh, open up, uh, I think, uh, uh, new opportunities into the way that one could organize uh, content inside a museum and, uh, and allow for a different experience from the, the one that we all know. Um, here is a plan of, uh, of the building uh, with all the objects inside. Uh, and the building, uh, uh, it's, it's shaped by, by two requirements. Uh, one requirement is, of course, the outline of the site. Uh, the other requirement was uh, uh, the request to keep 30% uh, of the site as an open, uh, uh, as, a, as a green space. So what we have done, we have simply offset the building, um, uh, we have simply offset the building um, 30 meters from, uh, from the limit of the site. And again, every 30 meters we have created entrances into the, into the building. Um, you see the building sitting in the context of, uh, of, of Sejong. Uh, it's a large building, uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a large building because uh, uh, just because it, is, uh, it, 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 it was requested to, to, uh, to do a large uh, building. Uh, and uh, just for scale comparison, you can see that this will have become uh, uh, one of the largest museums in the world compared with the Hermitage in uh, St. Petersburg, Louvre, uh, or the Metropolitan um, uh, Museum. Uh, but once again, uh, just to speak about our interest in, uh, in, in the office, uh, uh, it's an interest of how does one organize and place objects um, in, a, in, a, in a given context. Um, and this, this discussion of how to organize objects, of course, uh, can easily be extended into how does one uh, organize uh, buildings on a, on a site and how can one go beyond the, 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 the regular grid uh, or the regular problems of organizing buildings and create uh, spaces that um, uh, actually allow for different interactions. So how does one uh, organize this and how does one place on a, uh, on a flat ground uh, completely, uh, completely generic objects, simple cubes, but actually those cubes, the way that they are shifted, allow for different ways for people to meet and interact in the city. Um, 
What you see here, it's actually a, a project that we have done in, uh, in India a couple of years ago uh, in collaboration with, uh, uh, with Talar Rameh, with Shirin Rohani and uh, uh, Hannes Wittelbert. Uh, it's a competition that we have been shortlisted for. It's a competition for an IT campus. Um, and what was interesting about this competition is that the site came with, uh, with existing buildings, with a series of six buildings uh, that were already under construction on the site. Um, so uh, the competition asked for a fairly large program to be uh, actually placed uh, right in the middle. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the city, uh, the, the site was uh, close to, 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 to Delhi in uh, Greater Noida. Um, and uh, our approach here has been to take the, the full program, which was 62,000 square meters divided between offices, commercial spaces, residence, and institutional, and to break it into uh, the smallest units possible, and then take this, 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 this collection of, of small and medium and large building kind of just uh, throw them on the on the site and then organize them uh, uh, according to just a couple of uh, a couple of simple principles some of them being just to allow for fire um, for fire truck access um, and of course the the bigger building kind of gravitated towards the edge of the of the site um, and you see the you see the collection of buildings and how they how they sit on the site um, and how they become a proposal for a for a new not I don't think I should call it new but just a proposal for maybe what will be in the context of Greater Noida a new type of uh, IT center that goes beyond the, the the production of your regular glass pyramids or uh, glass spheres or other uh, other type of uh, large architectural objects that uh, in my opinion make little sense um, this is a red city obviously uh, and it's red uh, because uh, uh, we made the the, the, uh, the decision to wrap everything into a series of uh, of, of stone louvers uh, uh, made out of um, made out of red stone which is specifically to to that area of uh, of india and also to extend that treatment of uh, material uh, also on the ground and we thought it would be quite a quite a beautiful experience to to think about this this treatment that extends throughout the whole uh, development and uh, which again creates uh, strong moments uh, um, uh, and maybe surreal moments, but also it's a, it's, it's a project that allows for different landscapes to be interlocked in between uh, these uh, this red buildings. We have, a, we, we have a special affinity for the red color, which is hard to be explained, but appears throughout the, our projects. Um, I, I don't think we are extremely talented in working with colors uh, in the office, but uh, uh, so maybe that's why when we have to do something slightly more colorful, we, we default to red because it's clear and straightforward and doesn't, uh, most of the time doesn't uh, require explanation. Um, what you see here, it's, uh, it's a first sketch for a house uh, in Toronto. Um, we have a pro this project uh, single house uh, and we did a few sketches uh, imagining how can this uh, uh, how can we create a building that has no windows and can be uh, can live only through a large uh, uh, a large skylight uh, this is a project for uh, this type of context, uh, uh, a very posh uh, area in uh, Midtown Toronto, uh, very quiet and very, uh, I guess, uh, beautiful. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna call call it, especially in this uh, late afternoon, summer afternoon, where everything seems to be perfect in Toronto. Um, this is our proposal. Um, 
the, the shape that uh, our proposal took, which is uh, basically a simple concrete uh, building. Um, many people looked at this building and thought we are, we are trying to be very, uh, you know, aggressive or try to, to disrupt things. Uh, um, but this house is actually the one of the most, uh, uh, I'll say, uh, follows the, the context and try to be as, as uninteresting as the context itself. It follows the rules. This is a building that has exactly the same types of openings as the other houses. Uh, this is a house that aligns with the, the other with the other houses you can see it here right in the in the middle it doesn't try to be larger or smaller uh, it doesn't try to to take over the the, the front yard or the backyard um, um, it's a building that actually just uh, just by following uh, the rules of the context and by slight manipulations um, managed to to create uh, a, a, an architecture um, our only i'll say our only uh, when it comes to the exterior what we have tried to do is to address the idea of how does one enter the the, the house and the idea of the front yard um, and from our experience uh, with with the houses in toronto we we thought that the best uh, entrances in the in a house are not the ones from the front which are so much choreographed and boring are the ones from the side uh, where you manage to experience the space in between houses uh, in a different manner. So our front entrance was actually under uh, this, uh, short, uh, this, this, this short uh, canopy um, by, by this column which is the, 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 the rainwater uh, pipe. Um, at the back again, uh, as you can uh, see in this image, there is no real, uh, um, there's no real effort to, to stand out and things are kind of uh, in a way quiet and probably the only thing that seems to, uh, to be a little bit unsettling, it's just its materiality. Um, so what's what's wrong with the uh, concrete in Toronto or concrete uh, for a house in Toronto is still kind of a, 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 a dilemma. Um, the house um, actually sits on a side that it uh, has a has a slight difference in levels from the front part to the uh, back part. Uh, so the front, uh, for, so the ground floor of the building, it's organized as a series of steps that slowly carry you from the front of the house all the way to the to the back. Um, in terms of organizing the, the spaces of the house, these three plans show that if the, um, if the basement plan is some sort of a labyrinth, uh, the ground floor plan, the one in the middle, is more of a, uh, it's, it's more of a, a space that uh, is continuous, but also it's a collection of niche spaces, while the upper floor plan is just a, a, an open room. Um, we have insisted on uh, on working with uh, with concrete and actually trying to shape everything through uh, to one material again uh, comes out of uh, our interest in uh, in keeping things uh, incredibly simple and uncomplicated you probably have seen this also in the in the project for uh, india um, and in the project for montreal or, or the one in prague um, but just to continue, one will take the stairs up from the ground floor and will arrive into the space of the, uh, into the upper space, which is again an, uh, just an empty room, uh, which is being occupied by different uh, objects from furniture um, to books, to, uh, to, to paintings, to, to washroom objects, uh, uh, etc. Uh, as I said, uh, the upper room, as you can see here in, uh, in, in this plan, it's, it's a, collection of, uh, a collection of objects, which again, for us, alludes to the project we have done in Sejong and the project we have done in uh, India, that uh, uh, what we are putting forward is just a simple and a, and a quiet space for the, for the owner to, to inhabit and for the owner to uh, organize. And again, the, the, the moving to the outside, the building 
has uh, very little expression, especially when you read it through uh, these line uh, drawings. And we have learned by working on this project how it's possible to create uh, strong architectural effects by simple moves, by simple manipulations of the uh, of the of the house envelope without trying to 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 do any kind of uh, of, of of actually to be way uh, to be too forceful. Um, um, and I'd like to conclude uh, my talk uh, with a couple of uh, things. Uh, uh, this is uh, one of the few projects that we have done, we have tried to do in Toronto. This is not a, a realized project, it's just a proposal. But as you can see here, once again, uh, um, the effort is to engage into a conversation with uh, with uh, with Toronto or with parts of Toronto, um, and in a way to to kind of to try to get into a moment where one can be um, as respectful and as uh, quiet as possible, and hence maybe generic, uh, and at the same time try to create a sense of uh, of expression. Um, and this is kind of comes uh, throughout our project, the, even if it's a, a large master plan uh, uh, such as uh, this one in, uh, in Sweden, even if it comes to, um, to how, how to do a market hall such as this project we have done in Innsbruck in Austria, um, we are trying to think how does one can, uh, can be in a way uh, quiet and, uh, and in a way generic and at the same time uh, work with certain specificities or certain desires that come out of, uh, out of other means uh, or other, other, other desires. And of course, one of the desires is that of the architect itself to create uh, forms that, is, uh, that are appealing for herself or himself. Uh, but again, throughout our work, we have tried to to, to, to forge or to combine what might be a, a highly specific form uh, with a very generic form. Uh, these things sometimes come out of how, uh, how also that, that clash between two forms can be expressed, such as in this uh, proposal for Coachella in, in California. And even in, uh, in, the, in the case of uh, Montreal uh, project, you can see that uh, uh, the project, yes, was a, was, a, was a very generic form, that of a simple extrusion through the city, but there are inflections that are, are, are introduced uh, there to, to kind of to create, a, uh, to, to, to push the project a little bit uh, uh, different. Um, I like to call uh, this effort, uh, I like to call them strange primitivism. Um, this is uh, actually the title of an uh, upcoming book, which is going to be released uh, next week. It's a very small book uh, that, that contains a collection of uh, essays uh, and also a, a collection of uh, images that uh, the office has done in the past uh, 10 years. In a way, it marks uh, it marks 10 years of work that the office has done, uh, but at the same time it tries not to, and it's actually not at all a monograph. Um, it's a book that comes with uh, four different uh, covers. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a book that in a way tries to break apart uh, the idea of, 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 a, of a clear image that maybe we are all experiencing uh, uh, constantly, constantly throughout, uh, you know, throughout Instagram and other uh, other means, and I'll just play, here, uh, you know, just uh, just a quick uh, flip through the book. This is a book uh, that has been uh, imagined by Haller Brunner uh, from Amsterdam, uh, incredible graphic designers. And uh, just to close off, I'd like to, to read one of the texts uh, from, uh, from the book. The book has 35 texts, uh, and each one of them is just a, just a, short, uh, um, a short inquiry into what maybe it means to be uh, an architect or a young architect today. The cruelty of our profession is that we always have to imagine something special. 
invited to, into an empty situation, our speciality is the special. We are required to make something sophisticated, slightly complex, preferably very expensive. The task ahead, to burn large amounts of money. The objective, to overcome nothingness. Design me a shelter and make it great, is the request. Imagine nothing special, I propose. The client with a blank stare. I defend my manifesto with a more elaborated phrase. You don't need to imagine something special where there is nothing. In the year of the beholder, this is borderline idiocy. I am not buying manifestos. I have money, I want shelter, give me architecture. Me, Anabash, dear buyer, all that I am selling is concrete moments to stay into the present. No past, no future, nothing into focus, except the present. You alone in the present, that is my project. Thank you very much. I guess uh, I am now uh, open for uh, for questions, remarks. Uh, Adrian Banu here. Can you see me? Yes, Banu. Hi. Yeah. So uh, uh, thank you for the lecture. Uh, it was. Uh, I mean, for me, it was quite refresh, refreshing to look at your work all over again, you know, what I've been uh, seeing for last 10 years that you have been doing and I've been following up on what you've been doing at uh, the schools. Uh, uh, so, do you, uh, do, you, do you want to start with the serious questions or with the funny questions first? Uh, surprise me. <laughs> yeah. You said you said Toronto is kind now. So is it probably because marijuana is uh, uh, legal? Uh, I I think was was very kind even before marijuana was legalized in the city. Um, so no, it doesn't have to do with the uh, with with that aspect of uh, of uh, of Canadian society. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now, second uh, second question. Uh, uh, you, you you constantly talk about these new generics. Uh, you constantly talk about when you're explaining your projects, uh, 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 and the, then the kind of projects that you're showing and the kind of work that you've been doing is you know quite away from uh, uh, the the, com the commodification of. Uh, urban space that we we see across you know travel uh, uh, i mean i've mostly traveled around a bit in north uh, a bit in north america and a bit in uh, toronto for being in canada but everything uh, 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 looked very commodified everything looked very uh, uh, very very similar no matter where you sort of uh, whatever conditions that you encounter so on one hand, you're saying that you're talking about your book, which is New Generics, or the approach that you're saying is New Generics. And on the other hand, it is quite contradictory to the uh, uh, the commodification of uh, urban space. Can you can you elab can you explain this this term New Generics, which in a way is contradiction to uh, commodification of uh, the urban space? Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that it's so much uh, uh, the idea or the project of new generics is against the uh, commodification of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the urban space. It's, uh, it's more of a project that tried to insert itself into the present and try to work its way out by actually understanding even the aspect of the space. Uh, uh, so uh, this is to say that uh, the project of new generics it's actually a project for um it's a project in praise of uh, toronto and it's a project in praise of uh, uh, its generic quality because i the way that i i have always read or understood uh, toronto is as a space which is incredibly open and hence uh, uh, hence uh, kind um, right, that openness to any kind of uh, foreigner 
uh, I think it's, it's made possible by the fact that it doesn't have strong specificities. And anyone who comes into the city is able to be uh, herself or himself. Uh, um, right, so I guess uh, some people will take uh, this remark or to call something generic as an insult. Uh, and that's for me where I think uh, lies maybe a certain, uh, a certain problem because uh, uh, the generic can be a quality. Okay. Um, um, there's another question that uh, we have. I, uh, is authorship the key to making the generics appealing and livable? In other words, uh, your generics are incredibly unique, which is achieved by non-generic organization. Mm -hmm. So generics require rework to become something else. Is that what you refer to as uh, authorship? I guess so. Uh, our designs uh, they do suffer from a from a quality of uniqueness, um, and I think that's impossible to uh, to avoid because uh, there's always going to be an author. There is going to be somebody at the other end that is going to to draw the first sketch or put forward the first uh, um, you know the first idea. Uh, but I, I like to say that, you know, the, the, the uniqueness of our project is also the fact that allows for those that are occupying the, uh, the buildings themselves or the spaces to, to participate into that authorship process. Um, so uh, by authorship uh, and by, a, by a, you know, a conversation on the idea of authorship, it's also a conversation for how does one uh, think about uh, uh, form in the city as a way to, 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 to kind of to, uh, to not dictate what's going to happen, but actually to allow for things to happen in an unpredictable way. Mm. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a very, very tough uh, question, the one of authorship, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, we as architects, we have to sell something and we have to sell a building and sometimes, uh, and in the past two decades, that has been equal to actually uh, selling, you know, a building uttered by such and such. Um, um, so, you know, to, 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 to try to speak about authorship only to say to give up on authorship uh, it seems like a, a, a suicidal uh, move. Okay, can you el el elaborate a bit more on that? Well, I, uh, I, I think we are just, uh, you know, uh, we are at the end of uh, an era in the architectural practice. And that era was the one defined by the presence of uh, what one would call superstar architects, um, right? Uh, that actually implied uh, a survival of uh, in the practice by, uh, by selling uh, signature buildings, um, right? Um, so uh, uh, I guess uh, there is a there is a moment uh, right now where uh, actually not going against uh, that 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 aspect of architecture uh, because you know in the end these superstar architects are also incredible incredibly intelligent uh, um, people and such talented uh, designers but I think. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to to do here, which of course I try to make visible in the with the first two slides of this presentation, is that I'm trying to understand the city as an erasure to an erasure of icons um, and an erasure of, of of maybe this clear idea of authorship. So in a way, I. Uh, uh, I am not so, and I don't feel very comfortable when I create projects that are very iconic and that are being judged through their iconicity. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the projects that we have done uh, seem to be incredibly uh, unfamiliar, uh, hence maybe unique, but also they are incredibly familiar. Everybody understands uh, 
a house uh, on a stick, uh, everybody understands uh, an egg, uh, everybody understands a, a simple circle or a, or, or a cylindrical form. Okay. Um, there's another question. Uh, you mentioned about the inquiry into the idea of designing a street today. Could you elaborate on other realms apart from art architecture that help you to stitch uh, this study holistically? I think uh, the street is just one example of how um, of public space. Um, um, so, um, so our. Uh, uh, So another example, it's another type of public space, such as uh, uh, the entrance into a building, right? Uh, which I think has been elaborated into how does one think about an entrance into a private house mm -hmm. and how that is being expressed uh, into the public space. A, a space underneath a, a building, it's another you know, example of a, uh, of a space that is quite interesting for us. I, I think the, the the project we talked about the extension of the piazza under the under the, the competition project with uh, the arches yeah. and and what happens between uh, in between the the, the pixelated uh, uh, the massing of uh, the project that you did in uh, Delhi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that a question or a remark sorry no i'm just i'm just talk, yeah. talking about like uh, 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 how you've encountered the uh, in terms of dealing with and sort of articulating public spaces in your different projects so apart from the street project that is where you have sort of dealt with and in some places you have been very very articulate and in some places you have just left it uh, to a very sort of subtle interaction between the interface of the project that you were proposing and how it would sort of end. sometimes you know you you have, again you use this word a lot quiet in a lot of your projects your uh, um, the formal expression that you're talking about on one hand you say that it's very quiet but on the other hand and again there's a question to uh, uh, as an extension to this remark that uh, what is your I mean on one hand you refer to it as a very quiet uh, gesture but on the it appears to be very brutalist, very strong. Uh, uh, in fact, you even mentioned uh, Arnold uh, um, uh, flexing his muscle in one of the projects where you, you, uh, I, I think, N E T F T or you know something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, some of your projects literally look like Hulk quietly sitting in the middle of a public square. You know, so so, can you talk about it being brutalist and you referring it? as a very quiet expression i mean you know i think our projects are more like uh, uh if you are to compare with arnold schwarzenegger you probably know that the one who defeated arnold schwarzenegger it's a ninja fighter so i like to see about uh, to read our projects more like a ninja moves um right in a way that that quietness uh, uh, there's a certain quietness in, uh, in I, I think, in the projects uh, because, uh, uh, you know, sometimes the, our projects, uh, so that quietness for me, what it actually means is actually not designing everything. Uh, that uh, uh, what, uh, in a way, again, as a reaction to what I'm seeing today, uh, the architect as, uh, as the character that has to design absolutely everything that has to design world um, so that's about the quietness uh, uh, regarding the Arnold Schwarzenegger and the ninja fighter right uh, if you look at the, uh, the shed done by Diller and Scofidio in New York uh, and I'm using that just as one example of ETFE I don't think it's it's about that project specifically it's more about ETFE it has a certain aesthetic yeah. uh, uh, that kind of is still an aesthetic that tries to achieve a, a, a signature, 
um, as opposed to what we have done in the in the Montreal, which is this quiet void in the city, which might seem incredibly strong and powerful, but it's uh, powerful just because again introduces into into the making of the city the idea of a void, of a space that actually is not reachable by anyone. Uh, how uh, uh, this is another long question uh, you come uh, okay what, what, what is uh, how how does your work uh, or your approach is influenced by by literature by by cinema uh, uh, by performing arts um, you know especially in this age of uh, rampant consumption of images that are available to us what is the influence of uh, you know these mediums on your approach? Um, it's, uh, it's quite, uh, I, I, I don't know, what sh how should I answer? Should I uh, just reveal the, who, is, uh, who is influencing my thinking that it's outside architecture? Uh, I guess uh, someone like uh, Dostoevsky, somebody like uh, Karl Ovet Knausgaard, uh, um, maybe the work of uh, Yasujori Ozu and his movies, uh, maybe the work of Nagisa Oshima, um, uh, you know, so of course I'm being, uh, uh, I'm being very selective uh, about uh, what I decide to bring into my work, my work in architecture but it's in general the work of uh, people that are in a way uh, incredibly, again, I'm, I'm going to use again the word quiet, incredibly quiet, <laughs> but also incredibly uh, out of norm. Okay, there's another uh, question. Again, it's a pretty long question. Your, um, uh, your combination of the generic and the unique gives a very strong surrealist feeling in certain projects. Reminiscent of Salvador Dali and his paintings and movies. Is there a deeper understanding behind combining two seemingly unrelated subjects to portray a strong feeling, a philosophy perhaps? Um. Uh, the, the combination of the generic and the unique. Uh, uh, gives a very strong surrealist feeling in certain projects. I mean, I, I like to think about our project not so, not so much as being some sort of a, a surrealist effort, which <clears throat> I do use surrealist images sometimes to explain a certain aspect of, of, the, of the project, but I like to think about our final projects more as a, uh, some sort of a Dada moment in the city because uh, the way that I read the surrealism it's a way of uh, escaping uh, the reality that it's here in front of us by actually establishing links that carry you into a different world as opposed to Dada which is uh, uh, of course, incredibly absurd, but it's always anchored into uh, the idea of a present. Uh, how important it is, uh, how important is the act of engaging in the use of color as far as cities are concerned? Is another question. Uh, can you repeat the last part of the question? Uh, how important is the act of engaging in use of colors as far as cities are concerned? Um, I think it's, uh, it's just uh, totally unimportant. The way that one will use the uh, color, I think uh, it's just uh, incredibly subjective. Uh, uh, Adrian, in, uh, I mean, you, you've been working on a lot of competition projects and you've been winning quite a lot of them. Uh, there's another question that, do you, do you sort of uh, uh, 
uh, is do, uh, do you do you tackle the essence of the, 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 the program or the brief of the competition or do you tackle the uh, brief or the essence of the context that you're dealing with or is there something extrinsic uh, um, you know outside the both that sort of you uh, it, is that where you see uh, the, the essence of the project that you want to address to or you know it, it, it lies over there is there an um, I think the, the, it's, it's all of the things that you have mentioned happening at the same time. Okay. There is, uh, you know, an awareness of the program. There is uh, an awareness and interest into the context. Uh, there is uh, an awareness of our, uh, of the references of, or of the, the movie that I've seen uh, the day before. Uh, there is all these things that actually uh, happen at the same time and I, I don't try to prioritize absolutely anything. It's just throwing everything into the game um, without, uh, without thinking uh, that no, we need to, uh, to address the program this time and this time we need to address the context, etc. I'm just uh, trying with every competition to create uh, moments of maximum uh, friction between uh, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's another question. Atmos uh, atmospheres is generally a newer term uh, with written work by Peter Zumthal. How does that fit into phenomenology and how does a specific atmosphere relate to a person's experience of architecture, either sensed or sentient? Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, it's a little bit uh, unfair to, to uh, always uh, include Peter Zumthor into a discussion about atmosphere because, uh, I, I mean, uh, he, he, you know, Peter, he, Peter Zumthor hasn't invented atmosphere or the notion of atmosphere. Uh, I think uh, um, atmosphere is such a, uh, 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 I mean, who, who, in general, I, I don't think about atmosphere too much uh, in my work uh, or all these other uh, uh, elements. Uh, so, uh, I, I feel that atmosphere, whenever you say the word atmosphere, it's kind of you are answering your own question, what is atmosphere? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just the things that kind of surround you and your relationship with the things that are around you. And uh, I think, you know, just to build up projects just around the atmosphere and creating sublime moments, uh, in a way, it's absolutely boring. Uh, there needs to be other elements of uh, disruption and other elements that kind of uh, allude or try to emulate uh, uh, how tense it's are present. But in terms of, you know, uh, uh, how does it fit to the phenomenology or uh, the, the person's experience of the architecture, either sensed or sen sentient? You know, how, how is the extension of that term into the whole experience component of a built environment? Um, I mean, I'm not sure if I completely understand the, the, the I completely understand the question, uh, right? Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, there is, uh, I, 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 I don't know how to answer this, this type of uh, question. Uh, is, uh, is atmosphere something visible or invisible? Is atmosphere, I mean, it's, it's all these things at the same time. It's kind of atmosphere, it's such a totality, uh, right? But uh, if you want to bring it to the foreground and speak about it, right, I think it's more interesting to speak about it in the context of genericness rather than, you know, uh, uh, a super cool museum. 
because a super cool museum by default needs to have an absolutely amazing atmosphere that kind of appeals to all kinds of senses. Um, uh, right, and uh, when we tend to work on uh, housing, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we forget about the notion of atmosphere. Uh, Adrian, one last question. I think we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think there are also a lot of students uh, uh, present here, uh, and probably, I guess, it's uh, by one of them, or probably it's a young architect who is uh, attending the lecture today. How would you, how would you recommend a young architect designer make a living with their own non-conventional practice, uh, like yours? Well, you know, uh, this is a good moment to also be extremely honest here. Uh, I do, I have about uh, five jobs that I'm doing at the same time, uh, right? Uh, I, I try to maintain this practice, but I also teach and I also have another practice that does uh, images, renderings for other people. Uh, so you, it's, I, I, I don't think it's, uh, there is any recipe for how to, to, uh, to have an experimental practice today, uh, unless you are ready to engage on absolutely everything that is around you. Um, because uh, most of the projects that you have seen, uh, they have not been paid projects. Um, so, you know, just, uh, I, I guess there is a moment where you have to say yes to everything, but not to every little thing or every, 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 everything. Uh, and you have to be just, uh, also keep a sense of optimism. Um, and kind of succeeding in this uh, in this uh, profession of architecture, right? I I like to call myself a young architect. Yeah. I'm still a young architect. <laughs> no, I, I I remember that. Uh, I think this was my second day uh, in the MUD program, and and, and uh, another student that I was talking to, uh, I think from your batch. He sounded very pessimistic about the whole program and uh, the, the entire field of, you know, getting into uh, architecture and then getting into urban design and sort of then, you know, uh, taking it forward towards the practice. And you, uh, I think you just walked past by him and you told him, at least be happy that you're studying with me, <laughs> if, if you remember. So I, I, think, I think that kind of optimism... Uh, uh, it's still, I mean, it's, it's very, very obviously, it, it's visible into your work and, and quite adventurous uh, uh, and, and quite rigorous inquiries that you're doing, quite adventurous, ad, ad, uh, ad, um, uh, adventurous work that, that, that you're doing. Very in, inspiring, both in terms of, I've been referring to your work and showing your work to my students for last uh, seven, eight years. So in a way, you have a very strong influence out there. Uh, uh, and I think that influence comes from uh, your your uh, uh, your uh, uh, your ability and uh, and your rigor to question things and sort of to sort of you know uh, uh, engage into uh, uh, a kind of inquiry that has not been either not been done before or an in inquiry that is very aggressive and very uh, uh, very radical at the same time which I think is very important for uh, the young students who are sort of watch, watching your lecture and looking at your work. So I'm, I'm, I'm specifically, I'm talking this in the context of the students who are watching uh, 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 this session. Uh, so, uh, Adrian, uh, with this, uh, I guess, I'll just check if we have any more questions. I think we have covered almost all of them. But uh, with this, uh, I would like to thank you. Uh, for agreeing and uh, uh, and sort of joining us for this session, and I thank you on behalf of Intersection Foundation and the university for uh, spending this time with us. And thank you to all the participants for uh, joining us. Uh, I think you have a huge fan following across the globe, and a lot of them. Uh, in, in fact, a lot of questions were from your friends, I guess. 
uh, uh, so probably they can them not to ask anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so probably you can sort of they can get in touch with you, or maybe we'll send you the questions that they've asked with their names, uh, so you can sort of get in touch and answer. But Adrian, thank you very much uh, uh, for joining us, and thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bano. Thank you so much, Mohit, for uh, for having me. Um, I guess bye. <laughs> okay, bye. By the way, uh, the the way you have framed yourself, uh, uh, the the frame right behind you. Yes. It, it has always you you're framed within that frame throughout your uh, the way you have composed uh, composed yourself with the background. You're always in that frame. It's, it's totally by accident. Okay. It's uh, it's actually it's a uh, it's a uh, drawing by uh, Tom and Go, who's uh, who's uh, an artist that I admire so much. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's it's a it's a drawing that has inspired me to do other projects. Yeah, I I think it quite resembles your project uh, uh, that you did with the Toronto Island Airport or the Toronto yes. Airport Island, something like that. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you, Adrian. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.